Hiya and welcome to Tallulah Lagash. I'm outside filming a video for you yet again and it relates to a dream that I had last night and the reason I thought this was a significant enough dream to make a video about although I do appreciate that some of the other videos that I've made about my dreams haven't involved significant um, or compelling dreams but the reason why I thought this one was worthy of coming to make a video is because it involved a particular online drama, YouTube based drama I guess you could say, that had a very deep significance in relation to something that's current in my life and I just feel that my dream was trying to talk to me about what's going on in my current life because it's still a source of tension and frustration and anger and resentment and bitterness so lots of pent up and not really well suppressed emotions so I'm going to tell you what the online or YouTube drama is and it isn't actually just confined to YouTube or any form of social media actually this drama has been really impactful on people's real lives offline so that's why um, I think it has this connection to what I'm going through in the real world if it was just YouTube drama you just leave it online and you can just say well that's something that involves the lives of people who make content and are here to entertain and can get quite messy online However, some of the issues that were involved in one of the scandals involving this particular YouTuber has wider repercussions for um, their audience in terms of some of the things that have been said could be quite, I don't want to use the word triggering, but could be personally quite sensitive issues and therefore it goes beyond a makeup brush scandal or a stolen jokes scandal and if you're familiar with YouTube drama then you might know that I'm referring to Gabby Hanna. Now I do not like Gabby Hanna, I've watched quite a bit of her content and I've tried to get into her content but it isn't something that I vibe with and unfortunately I found out about a lot of the problematic aspects of Gabby Hanna before I actually sampled her content so I may have been prejudiced from the outset but the particular scandal that I'm referring to and it's not a scandal it's actually just a really problematic incident that is ongoing and still is having massive impact and repercussions is that involving Jesse Smiles and to cut a long story short Gabby Hanna was friends with Jesse Smiles and at some point Gabby Hanna had contact communication visible online um, in the form at one point of a photograph of them together at a party uh, with Jesse Smiles former partner who had been convicted of a sexual offence against her so Gabby Hanna had then gone on to talk badly of Jesse Smiles online and there'd been this back and forth and now that there's been a lot of material exposed Jesse Smiles has been able to show just how unempathetic and victim shaming Gabby Hanna was and how deceptive she was when called out and um, sort of being held accountable for her actions and the reason why this particular incident was quite um, significant for me is I recently reconnected with a former school friend who I've known my entire life. While they were going through some problems in their personal life, they asked me for legal advice and advice from a friend. I gave that to them and then I discussed some of my childhood trauma of which this person was well aware because they were present during my childhood but wasn't quite aware of the lasting damage that the childhood incidents have had on me but I disclosed the lasting impact and how my mental health has suffered throughout my life 
I gave so much insight into my situation and the feelings that I have. And this friend of mine kept coming to confide in me night after night for hours upon end, asking me for advice on all aspects of her life and just draining me emotionally given I have a boyfriend in prison and also a job and a PhD to do and my own mental health was awful at this point um, and it was something that I was willing to do as a friend until I became aware that she was talking to people including the best friend of the person responsible for my truck childhood trauma who she was sleeping with in my very small town and also was still maintaining an active friendship with the person responsible for my childhood trauma which I could see on social media you know comments and kiss kiss and because she was going through a period of being single following the problems that she'd had in her personal life she was sleeping with a number of different people, as I say, including the best friend of the person responsible for my childhood trauma. And gossiping about what I'd gone through as if it is something that she can connect to other people about. That she can talk about her situation, compare it to mine, but she's actually talking to people who are friends or associates or acquaintances with the very person that caused me that trauma. And, as I say, maintaining an active friendship with that person too. And that's probably about as candid as I can get. Now, I cut this person out of my life. I ghosted them completely. And she has asked me what the problem is. And I have ghosted her. Because if she doesn't understand what she's done then I don't think I can explain it to her if she happens to watch this video I guess she's had it explained to her and I'm sorry that it had to come to the fact that you watched a YouTube video that I didn't even intend for you to watch to find out how appalling and problematic and toxic your behavior towards me has been and also then my nan died and given this friend knew my nan and had grown up going to my nan's house and understanding the relationship that I had with my nan I find it absolutely abhorrent that I didn't even get a condolences message from this person after I gave so much time and energy to them when they were going through their personal problems and giving them free legal advice and support and comforting them. So there we go. That's why there's a link between my situation and the Gabby Hanna situation because this idea of being betrayed by a female friend that knows your situation and they would rather back the predatory, toxic, offending individual rather than the victim who is their friend and the person that has confided in them about the depths of their trauma. Anyway, last night the dream I had was that I was in a classroom. Now, it's not unusual for me to dream about being in a learning institution, and that's probably because my entire life is spent in a learning institution. I haven't really left education. So I basically am in a classroom, but I'm not really sure what level of education I'm doing. I know that we are revising for exams. Now, I'm doing my PhD, so I don't have to revise for any exams because I just have to write a thesis. But I often have dreams, anxiety dreams, about exams and not being prepared and failing or not having even studied the subject that I'm expected to do an exam in. And I also have a lot of dreams about doing my History A level, which is odd because although it was a very difficult subject, I don't remember it being the most uh, you know, in terms of course of study that I've ever done, the most impactful one, it's just something that I did find quite tough when I was doing it. So that's something that I find quite recurrent, that that pops up as a particular anxiety dream. Um, I don't really know what 
level of education. I don't know what subject we were studying or what exam we were taking. But the people in the classroom with me were primarily people that I think I knew from school. Although I can't recall specific individuals other than, so there was the friend that I'm referring to earlier who I'll refer to as NH or Nadia, that's just easy. Nadia, then there was a guy called LM, I'll just refer to him by his actual name because at this point I don't think anyone is going to go look up my former school friends, Lee. There was another guy called Stephen and um, another person who I don't recall, but it seemed like a composite between these two people, one whose name is Joanne and another person whose name is Charmaine. So it seemed like a composite of those two people. And I think it just was a representation of people I'd gone to school with. Now, strangely enough, I had seen a photo from my school days on a Facebook account from somebody from my hometown. And I'd seen Lee tagged into one of the photos from primary school. And then there was a high school photo and... Stephen was in that photo and I don't know if I saw Joanne slash Charmaine anywhere but I saw another school friend whose name is Charmaine so there was two Charmaines in my school in my year for high school at least one I went to primary school with and she's one of the people that was gossiped to by Nadia I don't know why I'm now anonymizing one person's name but then giving out all the other names It is what it is. I don't think anybody's going to be watching this video. Anyway, I had seen that photo. So I'd seen at least two of the people in this dream. And then the name of one of the other people that could have been one of the dream characters. The teacher in the dream wasn't a teacher that we were taught at by, taught by at school. To try and get that sentence out there. But it was just kind of an archetype that I kind of have when I think of teacher in a dream. So it's typically a middle-aged or older woman who looks quite formal and has the demeanour of a strict authoritarian person. So I feel that that's kind of like a dream archetype. Anyway, we were in a classroom and I was aware that we were preparing or revising for forthcoming exams. I am aware that I am me in the um, present time. And basically, um, we're all sitting at, um, I don't know whether it's the same kind of desks that are in all kind of state schools, but they're kind of mint green and plasticky, kind of laminated tables, very, very kind of functional looking and institutional. And the day before this dream, I had been trying to explain the colour mint green to AJ. And I thought of institutionalised like linoleum floors. But I thought that would be a really obscure reference. So I don't understand how he doesn't know the colour mint green. He's in prison, not space. But, you know, I was trying to explain that to him. So that might be why those tables came up in an institutional setting. Anyway... I open our textbook that we've been given and I remember having a conversation about a week ago with a friend where, well, with two friends, where we were talking, two of us who had gone to state school, about having to share textbooks and how they were always written in by the former students who'd had them before us each year. Uh, the person, the third person that we were with, had gone to a very um, exclusive and um, expensive private school and was totally um, kind of baffled by this idea that we'd have to share textbooks and that they'd been used for year on year on year by other students and just totally written over and 
graffitied in and that we'd be expected to use those for our exams. Anyway, we get the textbook. I remember opening the textbook and seeing myself in third person perspective from a low angle. I think it's called a Dutch angle. And I think I know that from watching a documentary about Kubrick, but I may have misremembered that. But anyway, I see myself in third person opening the textbook and it's almost like a replication of the scene from Look Around You in the opening titles of series one, which I think I've referred to on a video on this channel recently. I kind of remember talking about Peter Serafinovich. I think it was on a live, but anyway, it was like the opening scene where the, the schoolboy opens the textbook and it's kind of really, it's like a parody of like 1970s educational short films that are made for um, watching in a lesson so that's what that reminded me of upon reflection and then as I look in the textbook on the page I don't actually have this awareness of the lettering of the book and I say that specifically because I've done articles on my blog Viva Lagash linked in the description box below on reading and um writing in dreams and how a language is distorted and there's a dysphagia with words where they're pronounced differently and you have a different idea of the meaning as to what is actually being said I'm not explaining that very well but the articles explain it in much more detail and they show some research around that anyway I'm able to read what's in the textbook and basically what we're going to be researching is my the incident that I went through in my childhood. And when I say incident, it wasn't just a, a brief fleeting incident. It went on for time. I went through something which nobody my age should have gone through. And even if people want to justify any aspect of it, that can be countered by the fact that I was a child and the other person was an adult. So it doesn't matter that I was a naughty, rebellious youth who drank alcohol and did a lot of very silly adolescent things, which I thought were the things that a big girl would do, like an adult would do. Like I would go out and I'd get a hold of alcohol and I'd stay out all hours and hang out at skate parks and smoke weed and go into pubs. But when it came to boys and dating, I was very, very innocent because I was quite a loner back then, the same way that I am now. And I was also very academic, but I had this rebellious streak. And a lot of people like to minimise anything that happens to me because I've got this rebellious streak. It's almost like, you can take it, you're a tough girl. You look for trouble. You are somebody that doesn't shy away from people who are known troublemakers. So what do you expect when you got caught up into their problems or their trouble? And that's kind of like being tarred with a brush that would, yes, be relevant to behavior, but not in terms of victimhood. You could be a victim no matter what you do in life. And none of the things I did were that serious. They were just looking back on it. The kind of stuff that rebellious, bored teenagers do. And so... Going back to the dream, I'm aware that we're looking at my childhood and certain aspects which are very traumatic. Um, as an exam topic, that's the class. And I feel horrified because it's like I'm unprepared for it. And in all of my other anxiety dreams surrounding education and exams, the unpreparedness comes from not knowing the subject. And it's this feeling of, I'm not gonna be able to answer the questions. I'm gonna fail the exam. I don't know anything about this subject. This was more like, I know everything about this subject, it's my life. But I'm unprepared to be able to take an exam on it. And I guess I'm unprepared to confront my friend because I keep telling people who ask me to confront her um, that I want to do it in person and tell her what she's put me through. But 
I don't even know if I'm prepared to do that. And people always ask me if I'm going to prosecute people for my past. And again, I say, I don't think I'll ever do it. I don't feel ready. I come from a very small town. There's a lot of people that I'm friends with who are still friends with that person. I just don't expect it to be somebody that I'm confiding in on that kind of close basis who's confiding in me on a close basis. I guess a lot of the other things that this person has said to describe their more recent traumatic experiences have been borrowing the language that I use to describe my experiences, which kind of stings even more. But there's a lot of people coming around the lake at the moment. So, and there's something jumping in the lake. I don't know if you just heard that, but something just literally leapt out of the lake and then splashed back down and have no idea what it was because I didn't see it. I just heard it and then caught the like reverberations in the water where it had like gone back in. I don't know if you can see my hand there. Um, but yeah. This, I woke up at some point from that part of the dream. Or maybe I didn't wake up, maybe I went back into a sleep. No part of that dream was lucid, obviously. I've said so much in this video that I didn't think I'd ever say online. But, I guess it's one of those things where, uh, without talking about it, I wouldn't be able to set the context for discussing what, I was talking about here because it would just be so decontextualized it would be almost meaningless and I wouldn't be able to like basically um, set the scene for then discussing the themes that came out from this so it was kind of necessary to do and it's actually quite good to get it off my chest because it's something I've been bottling up for a long time not the trauma I've talked about that with a lot of different people that I trust and some people quite honestly that I don't trust but that leads me on to another topic which I might do as a live because I find it easier to just talk on a live sometimes than on a video probably because I film my videos out in public but people who manipulate your mental health and also people that use negging as a tactic so I've had some experience of people using my mental health against me. And I always cite Kurt Cobain when I say, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. And it's because though I'm a very paranoid person and I go through mental health crisis, so it's crises, often my paranoia are actually real. So my intuitions are right. They're not just paranoia. I'm a paranoid person, but then I investigate. And although I can't go into massive detail on certain situations because of people's confidentiality, um, there's been situations that I've noticed people gaslighting me, manipulating mental health, and using like really toxic and abusive behaviors so I thought that might be something that could be discussed because it was really quite interesting to reflect back with a rational clear brain on certain situations that I've been through in my past and have that hindsight and it might be helpful for people to hear me discuss these things if they might have experienced it themselves or maybe even their responsible for doing that because I don't know if some of the people that have done it are actually aware self-aware that they're doing it but some of the toxic behaviors I've experienced and the impact on me I think has definitely influenced some of my dreams and what I see in them but I'm near the end of this video now so I'm gonna say goodbye but before I say goodbye I'm gonna say please do give this video a thumbs up if you like it share it if you think anyone else would like it comment down below give me some video suggestions go into the description box check out my social media Tallulah Lagash on Twitter Tallulah Lagash page on Facebook Tallulah Lagash on Instagram also totally ho on TikTok T-O-T-A-L-L-Y-H-O go check that out follow me on all of those things 
please do subscribe hit the notification bell tick all I do a lot of lives I interact I talk I chat to people so they're really fun but the only way you're gonna know that I'm gonna do a live is if you hit all on that notification bell so see you on my next video and thank you so much for listening me listening to me talking about all this deep shit but in the spirit of being authentic and candid and open with you guys I thought it might be um, a worthwhile topic and it kind of tied in with something else that I've been seeing online that's obviously kind of been um, internalized I will just point out and I'm gonna say this now not because I think I'm ever gonna get clout and be a big youtuber and have people go through my previous tweets but I am gonna disclose right at the end of this video before I go that I have been nasty to Gabby Hanna on Twitter I haven't told her to kill herself or anything like that I'm not like Chrissy Teigen I've just like commented on the Photoshop on her photos when she's been like flexing on people and called her out for being toxic and victim shaming but I definitely have I did I did do that so I just wanted to be honest about it thank you so much for listening to me Bye.